Alex Nitzberg, welcome back to our program today. Very glad you're here. And uh, you've got, uh, I think, a very interesting hot topic that we ought to discuss. Some that uh, I wasn't aware of all of this, and I appreciate you being uh, on top of it here, because what we're going to uh, look at today is a fellow named Dr. Willie Parker that you've introduced me to. He is a man who is self-identified as a Christian. I want to I want to definitely emphasize that, self-identified as a Christian, and he is an abortionist. He's written a book called Life's Work, A Moral Argument for Choice. And there was, as you pointed out to me, Alex, an article in Newsweek magazine saying, quoting Dr. Parker, saying, I am doing God's work. I am protecting women's rights, their human right to decide the futures for themselves and to live their lives as they see fit. Well, Alex Nitzberg, tell us what you know about this man, Dr. Willie Parker. Well, thank you for having me on again, Dr. White. And exactly, that that quote is what I want to start off with right there. He's saying that he's doing God's work and he's protecting women's rights. And it says, you know, their right to decide their futures for themselves. But what about the female girls, the baby girls that he's aborting? He's not protecting their rights. He's They're not going to have a chance at life because he's aborting them. And one of the interesting things about this uh, this man, Dr. Parker, he he is drawing a parallel between slavery and abortion. And the reason I think he's doing that, I think he thinks it's a form of oppression to restrict uh, abortion. And so I want to read some stuff out of it's an article on Newsweek's website and also an article on Rolling Stone. But first, I'm going to start out with the Newsweek article. And in there, it says, speaking from his own experiences of race and class discrimination, Parker compares restrictions on abortion to slavery. And then it goes on to say that he spoke Wednesday night at the Strand Bookstore in New York City about how in both circumstances, someone someone claims to know what's best for another individual and has control over that person's autonomy. And then in a Rolling Stone interview, uh, it says, and it, it, I should note that the Rolling Stone interview says it was edited for length and clarity. It says, uh, Dr. Dr. Parker is being quoted saying, I don't think it's bombast at all that the closest thing I could think of that would be analogous to women not being in control of their reproductive rights would be the horrible legacy of slavery we have in this country. So first of all, he's talking about in the first quote, I believe he's talking about a person's autonomy. And I'm saying, what about the autonomy of the baby, which obviously is still in the womb? It doesn't have the ability to defend itself. And I want to talk about this this issue where he's comparing it to slavery. I mean, yes, America has a despicable history of slavery, and Americans in modern America rightly look back at that point of our history with abhorrence and wonder how how could America, which is you know supposed to be a beacon of freedom, have something so horrific in our history? But we currently have an ongoing abortion holocaust, and we have the legalized slaughter of tens of millions of children. And this has been going on for years. And so I would say I would compare it to slavery as well, but not in the sense that he's comparing it to slavery. I would say that just as slavery is a, a blight on our history and it's, it's, it's horrendous and people look back at it with outrage. I hope there's a point in the future where people will look back at abortion and Americans that allowed it to continue and say, how could this happen? How could this have been accepted? I hope at some point we'll look back in our history and, and feel the same way about abortion that we currently feel about slavery. And then one of the other things I wanted to mention, he uses the term reproductive rights, I believe. Yes, reproductive rights. And there's other terms floating around out there like reproductive justice and woman's right to choose and women's health care. All, you know, some of them encapsulate other things besides abortion. But how is it just to take a child's life while it's in the womb? And who gave people the right to do that? There's no such thing as a reproductive right to terminate a pregnancy to commit an abortion. So... I think these are liberal terms, liberal terminology that people use. Excellent. So much, uh, so much good stuff in there. there are several things I want to just uh, throw in there. Uh, one is he uh, started in that Newsweek article that you uh, commented. He started about uh, talking about his own experiences. And I just think anytime that uh, someone says that we need to raise the red flag, because honestly, your experiences and my experiences are not worth a warm bucket of spit, are they, Alex, when it comes to what is right and what is wrong? And then he goes into another thing that uh, that uh, gets me every time is uh 
the uh, moral equivalence uh, arguments. And uh, usually when I see a moral equivalence argument, I say, well, you just don't have an argument on your own. So you're going to bring up something like slavery and uh, and uh, whether the sl slavery, I don't think any of us would argue uh, the uh, tremendous blight it was on society. And it's a blight that we got rid of. And, uh, and I, I think to compare that uh, again is uh, is weak argumentation, and then uh, your uh, comments about uh, the liberal terminology. Those who are uh, just getting into uh, watching the media, for example, or watching the world, you really need to be careful with some of these uh, quotes that come out. In fact, almost any justice uh, use of the word justice today has. Uh, been accosted by the liberals and just uh, turned and uh, and messed up completely. But I don't want to get off the uh, subject. So our, uh, our our subject today is a man named Dr. Willie Parker. Alex is introducing us to. He's written Life's Work, A Moral Argument for Choice, as Dr. Parker is trying to build a Christian argument for abortion. And I totally agree. I hope that uh, one of these days, Alex, uh, uh, that we will look back on abortion as we look back on slavery. Now, uh, this Dr. Willie Parker, what do you know about his background? Right. So in the Newsweek article, um, it says, and I'm reading out of the article, it says, at 15, he converted to a fundamentalist form of Christianity, preached in Baptist churches and knocked on doors to promise salvation through God. And it also notes that um, for religious reasons, he didn't want to provide abortions for the first half of his career as an OBGYN and instead referred patients to doctors who would conduct the procedure. But it's also interesting that it also says Parker says he never opposed abortion, but rather he was personally afflicted in providing the procedure. Then in 2002, it says he became a full-time abortionist. And um, it says also in the article, under ethical standards, he refuses to end pregnancy beyond 25 weeks, but will refer a woman at that stage to another doctor. He also won't perform abortions on women he believes are being coerced or to those who express gender or race preferences. And I just wanted to make a note on that point. I think that's interesting. Now, I'm assuming when it says under ethical standards, I think it's talking about his own personal convictions. And I just find it odd that um, someone who's willing to perform abortions will say that he ha he'll draw the line if you want it for a gender or race preference reason. He won't perform the abortion for that. Obviously, I would agree that that's not OK. You shouldn't abort your baby because you don't like the race or gender. But he, if he's willing to perform an abortion for one reason, why not perform it for all reasons? So I think that's an interesting note that it says there. Um, also, um, it says that uh, News, Newsweek notes that he was influenced by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s final sermon, which was called I've Been to the Mountaintop. And, and the article says that, that that sermon, he talks about the Good Samaritan. And so it says in the article, Parker realized he'd been afraid to help women in need simply out of fear for what other Christians would think of him. And then they're quoting him saying, for the Samaritan, the person in need was a fallen traveler. For me, it was a pregnant woman. And then it says he writes about his belief that a true Christian must give women the help they need. And I'm, I'm reading this, I'm thinking, so he's helping women by murdering their children. Th this is a very perverse, he has a perverse view of abortion. He's looking at it as he's helping these women, but I'm looking at it as he's taking the lives of these children so that's an interesting point that he was influenced by this sermon. Um, now, another thing I wanted to note, the article says, as both a Christian and a scientist, Parker attests that life doesn't begin at conception, as many on the other side of the debate argue. But many on the opposing side say Parker isn't a Christian. On that point, he says his religion isn't up for debate. If Christianity is defined by being, and then there's a quote, so I'm assuming they're quoting him here, obligated to be homophobic, to be anti-immigrant, to be anti-non-Christian, to be anti-woman, he tells Newsweek, then I'm not. But I'm glad it's up to an it's, I'm glad it's not up to an individual interpretation of another person who holds the same faith identity that I do to determine my authenticity or my integrity. And so I just wanted to make a note here. We don't know what Dr. Parker believes. We don't know if he's trusted that Jesus Christ died on the cross for his sins and rose from the dead, which is the gospel that saves you. I don't know what he believes. But I do know that what he's teaching about abortion is very unbiblical, and we can totally disagree and argue that that is wrong. It's not biblical. Um, also, interestingly, um, he is quoted saying in the Newsweek article, if God is in everything and everyone, then God is as much in the woman making a decision to terminate a pregnancy as in her Bible. Now, God is not in everything and everyone, and Dr. White, I'm sure you'll want to comment on this. But this is, this is not an accurate or biblical view. If you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit's in you. But to say God is in everything and everyone, that's not right. 
Excellent, uh, excellent thoughts and excellent comments and uh, disturbing uh, in so many ways. And I think what we see in his Christianity is uh, seen, unfortunately, in churches and even in pulpits all across the country and in seminaries all across the country. And that is that he seems to be saying, I define what Christianity is for me, which means words mean nothing and Christianity, uh, biblical Christianity cannot exist. And so uh, you're exactly right that uh, we've got to question the assumptions. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, he says, if God is in everything and everyone, then God is as much in the woman making a decision to terminate pregnancy as in her Bible. And uh, it's just a flawed assumption from the beginning and a, a flawed conclusion that it, uh, comes from that. So uh, how important to uh, question the assumptions. Uh, and uh, I certainly appreciate you making us aware of Dr. Willie Parker and what the media is saying about him. And of course, because the media is, uh, is pro-choice, that is pro-baby killing, they're going to strongly come out, no doubt, with uh, this uh, doctor's book because he supposedly comes from a Christian perspective and uh, our uh, viewers need to be aware. So thank you. Uh, Alex Nitzberg for being with us. We look forward to having you again next week. Thank you, Dr. Wright. I look forward to seeing you next week. And God bless you. It's been the Alex Nitzberg commentary on Ask the Theologian.